Welcome to Health and Bible Time. We're glad you joined us today. We are going to talk a little bit about cucumbers and lemons today. So let's get started. Do you ever feel like life is just giving you a bowl of lemons? I am in the book of Numbers and we tend to be just like the Israelites in the Bible and dwell on the good cucumbers of yesterday and think that we just have sour lemons for today. Before we dig into a convicting Bible study, first, a health thought that's very easy to do that a lot of people don't know, and it's good for many things. Wash and slice one cucumber and one lemon. Peelings and all, put them into a pitcher of water and let it sit for at least an hour I like mine after it sat overnight. I highly recommend you to Google cucumber lemon water. You can read many thoughts and many facts and what it's good for, and especially if you have any health issues that you need to be careful of. I drank cucumber lemon water faithfully for many, many months. I believe it curbed my appetite. I believe it helped me lose weight and helped me keep it off. It also totally helped with poofy, swollen ankles. But don't use bitter cucumbers. You will end up with bitter tasting water. Wow, that could be a spiritual lesson in itself. But today's Bible study is on those complaining Israelites in the Bible. Surely we are never like them. They truly believed they had good cucumbers in the past in Egypt, and God was now giving them sour lemons. Our Bible study is going to be in the book of Numbers, chapter 11. The Israelites, God just freed them from Egypt. God just parted the Red Sea. They are on their way to the Promised Land. They spent time at Mount Sinai while Moses was getting the law from God. And now, in chapter 10, the Bible says they departed from the Mount of the Lord three days' journey. They had only went three days' journey and were in chapter 11. And the Bible says, this is the Israelites talking. They said, we remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all beside this manna before our eyes. I guess they expected to arrive quickly or have perfect travels, just like us. We want to arrive now. We, whatever God's promised us, we want it now. And we also don't want any problems to go with it. But God knows we would never look to him for direction because he knows the way. God knows we would forget him altogether. Then we would never see how much he loves us. We wouldn't know his power. We wouldn't know his care for us. We wouldn't know the perfect path that he has for us. But we just like the Israelites, lose sight of our Heavenly Father because we do not like the lemons of life. Quite a complaint they've got going on here, claiming that they had cucumbers and melons and leeks and onions and garlic while they were in Egypt, which we did eat in Egypt freely. There was nothing free about where they were in Egypt. Maybe they did have cucumbers. Maybe they had a garden. I don't know if they had cucumbers, but they had forgotten the way God described where they were in Egypt. In Exodus, God gives us a very vivid description of what was going on, and most of us have read it and seen the movie and know how Egypt was, but this is the way God describes it. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor, and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field. All their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor. And if you look in the Strong's Concordance, the word rigor means to break apart, fracture, severe cruelty. 
There is nothing good and free about this right here. But they had forgotten. And God specifically told them they mustn't forget. And God tells us we mustn't forget. In Deuteronomy, God uses the word beware. Beware lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. God does not want us to forget the things that he's done. And God did not want the Israelites. He said, beware lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. And later in chapter 8 in Deuteronomy, God tells him what to remember. He says, and thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee. Remember all that he did. Remember all the way he led you. That's what God wants us to do. But they did forget over and over. They saw his goodness and then they forgot, and which made them complain. And that's what we do. We forget. We forget where God has brought us from. We forget how God provided for us. We forget promises that he made to us. We forget the times that we heard his voice so clear, which causes us to grumble and complain and question what God is doing in our life. Because we are sure that we used to have cucumbers and now our life is a bowl of lemons. In Philippians 2.14, God says, do all things without murmurings and disputings. Most of us know murmurings means grumbling. Do all things without grumbling. But disputings, that's discussion, debate, and doubting. Do all things without murmuring, which is grumbling. Do all things without disputing. How often we discuss and debate with God over what he's doing. That's exactly what the Israelites were doing. We discuss and debate our thoughts, which make us doubt God. In the book of Acts, chapter 27, the Bible says, this is Paul. They're in a storm. Paul is still a prisoner, and he's in a ship in a terrible storm. In chapter 27, verse 20, it says, And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. Do you ever feel like that? That all hope is gone? A hopeless feeling. A very hard time in our life when we feel like all hope is gone. But Paul says up here in verse 24, Paul says to them, fear not. Be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be even as it was told me. God says, be of good cheer, because I believe God. Believe the things that God has told us. We need to do that. We need to remember in the good cucumber days and also in the bad stormy days, the hard days, the things that God has told us. His word is full of amazing promises. Seek him in his word. I love the verse in Deuteronomy, chapter 31, verse 6. God said, Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. What a beautiful promise that we can claim. He it is that doth go with thee. God is with us. He will not fail us. He will not forsake us. It's very important that you're his child. You can't claim this promise that he's with you if he's not living within you. You need to be God's child. You need to be saved. If you do not know you are on your way to heaven, you need to click on the link that says trade in your grief and sorrow. It will tell you what God says and how you can know you are his child. And then you can claim this. If you are God's child, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee. As a child of God, we can trust him. As a child of God, we can praise him even in the storms of life. Claim his promises. Read his promises. Memorize his promises. 
He, God loves you so much, and he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee, even when your life feels like a bowl of lemons. Please subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching Health and Bible Time. I hope you will watch another video. Click on the end on one of the links. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye-bye.